Action 52 was released for the NES in 1991 by Active Enterprises. It's an unlicensed compilation of 52 games. Now, I'm no math major, but, I mean, just think about this. The Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt 2-in-1 pack sold like a bazillion carts. I know they were packaged along with the NES, but a bajillion copies is still a lot sold. That was only two games in one. This is 52, so that's like 26 times bigger than Mario Duck Hunt. So we're talking sales in excess of 26 gazillion copies to be sold, guaranteed. It's a money-making machine waiting to happen. On top of that, the main game to promote this compilation, Cheetah Men, was almost a shoe-in to be a major franchise with toys, cartoons, movies, video game sequels, and merch for everything you could possibly think of. Cheetah Men is primed to be the wave of the 90s. And just a reminder, this is 52 games. This was destined to be the greatest game ever, right? I mean, sure, the game was developed by a group of four random amateurs who were given a three-month deadline, but what could go wrong? To find out, I've enlisted in some help, because a game of this magnitude and sheer awesomeness is just way too much for one person to even grasp, let alone comprehend and break down. So, 52 volunteers have graciously stepped forward to each review a selection from the Action 52 compilation. Let's see what we've got. Hey guys, I'm Lam Julo. We're gonna open up Action 52 with probably the most epic of battles ever, Fire Breathers. This is an epic battle of epic proportions. Two dragons fight to the death. But one of the dragons is mentally handicapped and is a quadriplegic. I mean seriously, how could you play this game? It is completely unplayable. You just fly around and you're like, come on, move! Sure. You can control one dragon, but you can just completely annihilate the other player. Because you know why? They don't move. Plus, the background looks like somebody just took diarrhea dump all over the place. And these little red flames that fly around look like bloody turds. Now, I'm being a little mean to this game. It is a two-player game, so you could play this with another player. But, I don't know what kind of friend you would be if you had one of your buddies come and play this with you. You would almost have to give them a drug-inducing alcoholic drink in order to even remotely get them to think, oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a good idea. Yeah, no, not going to happen. Moving on. Star Evil is a shoot 'em up game in which... Oh, shit. I just died. So that's the end of the review, right? Wrong. That's the most irritating thing about the game, is the boulders at the very beginning of each level that you have to avoid. Otherwise, it's a one-hit death. And Star Evil is a game in which you are dodging boulders and shooting different enemies with different shapes and sizes. Sometimes you're able to hit your target, other times the enemy just goes off screen. There are bosses at the very end of each level but sometimes you don't even get to face that boss or you face the boss and beat it and you don't go to the next level so you end up either having to commit suicide or restart the game that's all the game is in a nutshell you are dodging boulders shooting different enemies with different shapes and sizes getting to the boss and beating it rinse and repeat and if you are able to get to the fourth level, it's unplayable. As a result, Star Evil is a clusterfuck of a game that you want to avoid. The third game is called Illuminator. It's an arcade style game where you play as the Illuminator looking for his sister. At least that's what the manual says, but there's nothing indicating a goal. You do this by shooting vampires with what I'm assuming based on the graphics is garlic bread and that somehow turns the lights on. The problem is that if you wait too long before killing one, the lights go out, except for the ladders, floors, and lamps, and you only get about a second. Why is that a problem? Well, you have no idea where you are, so you just have to walk blindly left and right until your shadow passes by the base of the ladders. If you're trying to go down, good luck. Oh, and a vampire could spawn right next to you and kill you before you even know what's going on, which is bullshit. You're best off just staying on the bottom until the enemy stops spawning, and then go up. As for your weapon, whatever it is, you can only shoot one at a time. 
so if you want to fire again, you have to wait until it leaves the screen. After killing enough of them, you go to the next level. Some of the vampires are replaced with shadow people, I guess, but they function the same way, except the speeds vary the farther you get. Sometimes they'll actually get stuck walking or fidgeting in place like they're having a seizure, and they can do it on top of the ladder, making finishing the level impossible. Starting in level 4, you also have these really annoying bats that swoop at you. It's a huge pain in the ass trying to kill these things, but they seem to die when they touch a ladder. You can jump press on the B button, but this is where you'll first realize how stiff and terrible the jumping mechanics in this game truly are. Especially when jumping over a gap. It honestly makes Super Pitfall look good. This means when the lights go out, you could have no idea where the gaps are. And if you fall, you'll dissolve in midair, or else just get stuck in the floor. Sometimes you can wrap around the screen, which can help you avoid enemies. You can also collect these batteries, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. The scenery changes a little, at least the colors, but there's not nearly enough variety to make this any fun. It goes on for 10 levels, and then it's back to the beginning. I'd say it's better to just drive a stake through this thing. GeForce 5, <coughs> or just GeForce, is a horizontal shoot em up, and in this case has no relationship to a hardware manufacturer. You control a pink colored ship through its never ending quest of the three same stages over and over again. Yes, variety isn't exactly the name of the game here. There are only a few different enemies and all they do is fly straight. Some of them shoot projectiles. So you see, describing their attack pattern is like explaining the story of Metal Gear Solid 2 to a three-year-old boy. The worst aspects of GeForce by far are the laughable difficulty and that it's extremely short. You can beat this game in less than two minutes and to actually die you really have to force contact with the other ships. The addition of a life bar doesn't make things any easier, or harder in this case. Graphics and sound are not the worst Action 52 has to offer, but don't expect too much. So if you suck at shoot em ups and need to rebuild your confidence, I recommend this game. Otherwise it's just a waste of time. And that wraps up this review. See you next time and keep gaming. When it comes to the game Action 52 guys, let's be honest, the whole game plays like shit. But one game in particular sets out to me much more than anything else, and that's the game Ooze. For one thing, it's a game that has a title screen to it, which is something I kind of find very surprising. And even more surprising is how the controls could be so freaking inverted, it's not even funny. Like for example, you have the uh, B button to, um, to jump, I think, where it should be the other way around. And then I hate the thing about you having to die when you try to fall from a platform in midair. What the hell is that? It's crap. And the whole game was like, you know, someone just sneezed over it and just, just say crusted dirt for years. It's just pure bullshit. Yeah, so when it comes to the game, I'd rather slime myself than play this game. In fact, I'd rather slime myself than play any of the games on this collaboration. Peace out, guys. Take care. So, I got stuck with Silver Sword. I would like to say that this game is what Zelda should be, but... We all know Action 52 and Silver Sword isn't what Zelda should be. It's even better. You are the bravest knight in the world in gray pajamas fighting forest mutants or trying to rid the forest of mutants. Look like, uh, I don't even know what to say. Some of them look like cars and some of them like, like spiders and plants, I think. Whatever you call these things, they're, they're amazing. And to make it even greater, all the enemies are faster than you and they're almost an impossible amount of enemies all with the same theme for every level and there are glitches galore glitches everywhere you know what zelda is so bad it don't got no glitches like on the scale of this game and it is not as good as this game i repeat this is the greatest version of zelda i've ever played if you're on drugs I'm also convinced that if you played this without an emulator and safe states, something is genuinely wrong with you. Have a good one. Critical Bypass is a game where the developers decide to become fucking lazy and only program about like six colors. Programmers are also a bunch of trolls because they made the background make your eyeballs bleed. Also, if you hit up, you fly like at the speed of light. Also, along the ground, that makes your eyeballs bleed. There are freaking Tetris pieces from the Tengen version of Tetris. 
The game is a game that's in a game that has like 23 space shooters. And this is like the 35th space shooter that's a game. On to the next game, Aqualungs. Game number 8 is Jupiter's Scope. It's one of the many single screen Astro Smash like games in Action 52. You are a ship defending what I can only assume is Jupiter from a barrage of meteors. Conveniently, Jupiter is a gas planet with no ground surface, so letting the meteors pass by you actually has no consequence. You'll start the game in the middle of the screen, usually with two meteors that will show up shortly thereafter. Shoot them both if you can, and move to the back of the screen. From there, the bulk of the game is actually just a waiting game, because you'll be waiting on more asteroids to appear so you can shoot them to get points. There are different stages, but for the most part, the stages are the same, and they only feature slightly different backgrounds. So stay out of the way of the meteors if you can, you only have three lives, and you should be fine. The game also has a two-player mode that allows you to switch off in between player one and player two, a la Super Mario Brothers. Much like the bulk of the Action 52 titles, this one is pretty lazily made and not exactly a whole lot of fun. It's pretty repetitive as all you're doing, you're shooting the one, two, three asteroids that are on the screen at the same time, and the different levels, all they change is the relatively arbitrary background image, and the fact that for the most part you're waiting on more asteroids certainly is not exactly helping the fun factor, so you're probably going to find yourself, even with the multiplayer, getting sick of this one pretty fast. Alright, so after you've spent half an hour trying to get Alfredo, or Alfred and the FedEx to properly work, you're thrown into this enormously long kitchen with living food trying to kill you. Yeah, they were real creative with this one. Fortunately, they disappear off the screen half the time, so that's a relief. Now this game plays pretty much the same as Ooze, meaning you can't jump and move forward unless you stop before hitting the B button. And you come out of the ceiling for some reason when you die. Only real difference being that instead of shooting the enemies, you have a frying pan as your melee weapon. Sometimes enemies will move back and forth near a gap. When this happens, jump forward and rapidly push the A button until it's gone. It's recommended that you use save states for this game, because even though you technically have two lives, more often than not the game will crash in the second and third levels when you die, leaving you with no choice but to reset the game. Not like it'll matter that much anyway, because much like an ooze, the game will crash at some point during the third level. This game probably has the same coding as ooze. NEXT! Game 10 on Action 52 is Operation Full Moon. In this game, you apparently play as a moon rover shooting at turrets and avoiding obstacles. Of course, you can't tell what the hell anything is because the graphics are horrible. You can't tell what you can go over and what you can't, so just avoid running into anything. The backgrounds are just horrible. I mean, it's mostly just a, a solid color with some dots placed around to make it look like it has texture. Oh, and if you go over to the sides too much, you die. It's like Silver Surfer. You barely touch anything, you die. But this game is way, way easier than Silver Surfer. You have so much room to maneuver, you can easily avoid anything coming at you. The turrets are easy to take out or avoid, and the game runs at such a slow pace you can see things coming at you no problem. But move to the right or left as soon as you start or you will run straight into an obstacle. The levels do change, but it's just a palette swap, that's it, nothing very detailed or spectacular about this game. As far as your weapon, it's a one pixel sized bullet that fires at a decent pace. But it's so small, you have to be right in front of anything to hit it. Sound-wise, you get one song that loops repeatedly. Or if you pause and unpause the game, for some reason you get a different song. And this one sucks just as much as the first one. Overall, this game just sucks. Plain and simple. The graphics are horrendous, the sound blows, and the gameplay sucks. On a system that has great shooters like Life Force and Gunhack, this really falls short of a decent game. Pegasus, out. Have you ever wanted to play a game on your Winnie the Pooh, shooting meatballs at mutant pandas, mutant pigs and aliens? Well, in this case, Dan Busters is the game for you. The 11th game in the Action 52 Mully Card features good music by Action 52 standards. 
And although this game is not that bad by Action 52 standards, it's still horrible by NES standards. And I'm gonna tell you why. First, the game is only two levels long, making it one of the shortest games on the multicard. It's not the shortest. And guess what happens when you complete it? It just sends you right back to the first level. I know this is Action 52, but why couldn't they even put a congratulations screen at the end of the game? That's just lazy. Second, the enemies randomly appear on any part of the screen. That means that Piglet's retarded brother can appear right next to you and kill you in one hit. Not to mention that he can also appear stuck in the middle of a wall. I know this is pretty stupid, but it still is a programming error, so I have to tell you that. But the worst thing that can happen to you in this game is to get stuck in a dead end. And as you may have guessed, you can get out of it without killing yourself. Thanks, Active Enterprises. Thanks for wasting my time on another barely programmed game. This game sucks. Don't play it. Game number 12, Thrusters. And you're just a floating green dick, flying around in the space, shooting at other green men on fire, badges, purple dicks. Yeah, they really couldn't come up with the idea, couldn't they? And all you gotta do is shoot at them and move and avoid the projectiles in the screen. Oh, by the way, there's a trick you can do to, to make yourself, you make your life easier. Just shoot around, shoot, 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 keep shooting, and avoid the blocks. And that's it. You pretty much, you pretty much, that's your guide to completing this level of this game. No fucking joke. Level 2 is not much different except when you die here, it comes, it's a big glitch that, well, just look at it. I mean, ridiculous. Anyway, level 2 is not much different except for changing sky and just the projectiles are replaced with donuts. And level 3, again, not much different except for a change in scenery. Instead, you shoot at red ice cubes. And finally, level 4, the last level of the game, you just... It's blue sky with stars and circled squares. Yeah, they couldn't come up with anything else. And guess what? Once you complete level 4, you're sent back to level fucking 1. That's Thrusters. What do I gotta say? Take it away for number 13. Hey guys, this is Max, and this is my review for game number 13, Hunted Hill. A simple start screen. Looks generic. You don't expect much. Then you press start and whoa! There's a female protagonist! That doesn't look bad at all compared to other games in the collection. So you go around killing ghosts and floating heads and stuff with your arrows, knives, crosses. I don't know, man. You start with three lives, there's no continues, no extra lives, no power-ups, no items. So you keep moving forward until you reach what looks like an angry blue light bulb moving up and down next to a bubbly pit. At this point, we can assume it's probably a spider. So you shoot it for a while and then it dies. There is no death animation for the boss and after killing it, the game jumps straight into the score screen and then right into level 2. So there's actually a boss at the end of each of the three stages. Unlike Castlevania Simon's Quest. The second boss is the same blue spider but now it shoots spider projectiles scattered and there is no bubbly pit so it's actually easier. Yet again, the third boss is the same blue spider, but now it's guarding a tablet, or a block. And you can beat the game by either killing the spider or collecting this object, which we can assume was actually the objective of the woman in the first place. In conclusion, it's definitely not the worst game in the collection, and certainly not the worst in the system. The music is simple and generic, but it adds to the ambience. Like other games in the collection, she jumps with B and shoots with A, contrary to most platformers. And it's kind of fun. No, really. So if you can, give it a try and see for yourself. Alright guys, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Uh, maybe. Chill Out is a platforming snowball fighting game and is the 14th game of the cartridge. You control an Eskimo navigating through platforms and throwing snowballs, with the goal of wiping out all enemies on screen to reach the next level. 
There are two enemy types, these giant blue snowballs that move left and right or just stand there, and these Eskimos who throw these slow-moving mini snowballs at you. Your character starts each level with about four hit points. Once you're all out, your character turns into a giant snowball and dies. Controls are okay for the most part. Moving your character left and right and climbing up and down ladders is straightforward, although there have been moments where you can accidentally slide off a ladder and die if you're not careful. Pressing A will throw your snowballs at your enemies, while B makes you jump. The jumping, however, is pretty awkward. In order to jump properly, you must tap the B button. If you press and hold it, you can't move during your jump. This can throw off your timing and result in numerous deaths, unless you've mastered the timing. And you can't jump over the little snowballs the Eskimos throw at you. You can bypass most of the pits on most of the levels by warping through one side of the screen to the other, however. Another problem is that sometimes enemies can respawn in areas, such as right on top of a ladder, where enemy collision is unavoidable. If you're down to your last hit point when this happens, you're pretty much screwed, since there's no other way to reach the enemy. The graphics are pretty bland and basic. All you get is a black background with a purple hill at the bottom, and some snowflakes colored on top, with some generic platforms and ladders pasted in. And the enemies are uninspired and consist of mostly carbon copies of your character, with a slightly different color than yours, with some occasional blue snowballs thrown into the mix. The sound is pretty minimal at best, but the background music is absolutely horrific, with some irritating high-pitched beeps and blips mixed in with the low beats. Overall, this is not an ideal snowball fighting game to play. It's very bland and gets old very quickly. Going outside and doing a real snowball fight in your backyard would be more exciting. After watching Jaws one too many times, a lone crazy man has decided to go out and kill all the sharks in the ocean. Like most of the games in Action 52, this one works on some sort of arbitrary trigger system and you won't go to the next level until you kill a ton of sharks. But the sharks have figured out what's going on, and they decide to start avoid this crazed killer. So you'll be waiting a nice long time. The jellyfish, well-known allies of shark kind, will eventually come in and put a stop to your genocidal attempts. Watch out, because they know how to move up and down. No matter how many sharks you kill, the game will just loop on forever. Because one man with a harpoon gun is simply not enough to kill all the sharks. He should have just polluted the ocean or caused an oil spill like a normal human being. Hey, this is Thinkbolt reviewing Megalonia. This is gonna be short. There's this ear-splitting electronic music just plays the same six or eight notes over and over and over non-stop. You have a spaceship that is flying slowly left to right. You can fire only one bullet at a time. Very slow moving bullet. There aren't very many enemies coming at you if you stay in one place and just keep your finger on the fire button. You should be okay and after about one minute uh, what I guess is a boss shows up moves slowly around the screen, you hit it a few times, it dies, then the next level starts, there's no explosion, um, there's no anything, the next level just starts, and the next level is exactly the same as the last level, the colors are just a little different. The first time I ever played this, there was no boss. The background just stopped moving, all the enemies disappeared, and I was left moving around on this stationary screen wondering what the hell happened. And that's it for Megalonia. Bye. French Baker, you play as the skinny twin brother of Louis from The Little Mermaid. You know, the crazy French chef stereotype who scared the crap out of Sebastian by slaughtering only marine life for his dishes? He's so thin because as you see in the gameplay, when standing still he's running in place. I guess that's how he burns off all the carbs he ingests from old pastries. But unlike Louis who just had a problem with the stray crab, your entire kitchen has turned against you. Cakes, hot dogs, donuts, even cabinets and letters for some reason. I guess he pissed off a land witch, and she cursed him to be murdered instead of suffering a coroner like he should've. It reminds me of Mario Bros. in the arcade, where you're beating up turtles coming out of pipes. Except in this case, you're just throwing plates at everything. It's a blessing in disguise that you don't have the jump option, which with Action 52 is commonly and unintuitively the B button, not to mention the jumps are stiff as hell. All you have here is the D-pad to move around, go up and down ladders, 
and the A button throws your dishes at people because you totally don't have actual deadly weapons as a baker like the blunt force from a rolling pin. And there doesn't seem to be an end in sight to the carnage in the kitchen, you just beat up as many of these monstrosities as you can before you die. They come out of nowhere, so sometimes you'll start and move to the right or left, and something will materialize out of thin air and kill you. Not that the hit detection is terribly accurate, you can be a good half an inch and then they'll still make contact. Think you've avoided the evil walking hot dog? Afraid not. And much like other Action 52 games, you can't survive a jump that would barely phase an average person. In fact, if you jump from what I assume is maybe a 10 feet drop, you just explode into dust. Just like if you get hit by the abominations of the culinary art summoned by this crazy lady that you called fat. If you got used to the game, it might be fun, but it's not really worth your time to adjust for the disappointing gameplay. Especially if you wanted to be a chef. Play Cookie Mama. Avoid this like Salmonella. Hello Aqualung fans, this is Trevor42532 and I'm going to do one of those mini review things of Atmos Quake. Well, it's the seventh shooter in the collection of Action 52, and it's the end of the first page, so if there's seven shooters in each page, there's three pages, would that mean there's 21 shooters in Action 52? Uh, that's a lot of variety. Anyway, this is a vertical shooter, and I think it's pretty good for Action 52 standards. It's got different sprites for turning left and right, which is surprising, because none of the other ones have it, I don't think. Well, there's these satellite things in the wall. You don't you don't even know like what they are if they're in the background or the foreground, but you can die from them. Stay away from them. This game here it has pretty bad sound. It's all high pitched and BB. You know anything like any of the other Action 52 games, pretty much. It has the weirdest dying noise I've ever heard in my life. I don't even think something like that can come out of my Nintendo. The shots for the enemy ships are slower than the ships themselves, which is kind of retarded. Might as well just ram the enemy, which is pretty much what they do. Now, what's the point of having shots that go slower than their ships? Unless they're bombs, which I don't think they are. Well, if you torture yourself long enough, you'll find that level 3 doesn't work, unless you have an emulator that will run Alfredo. If you have an emulator that runs Alfredo, then level 3 will be fine, but since the real Nintendo doesn't run Alfredo, I don't think that the level 3 works on a real Nintendo. And if you somehow get to level 3 to work and you go clear to level 5, even though I don't know why you would because it sucks so bad, you'll find that it's completely glitched out and you will start in a wall. It's not like that Spitfire or Starfire or whatever game that is, number 2, like where you start before a wall and you run into it. This one you literally start in a wall, so it's instant death unless you hold right and then it somehow brings you back to the first level. I don't understand. Well, this game pretty much sucks along with the rest of the Action 52 games. I'd play it just for the comedic value of its stupidity. Game number 19 is Miong. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, a lot of people don't understand how to play Miong, so I'm gonna do my best to explain. You play as an A52. Now, I wonder what that could stand for. But in all honesty, were the programmers too lazy to make an actual sprite to play as? <sighs> well, you move around from square to square, hoping you don't explode, right? Well, there are traps that make you explode if you land on them. You also die if you stay on one square for too long. That means every few spaces up, you have to continuously push left and right, or up and down, on the D-pad. Or your keyboard. To prevent death, and also see traps ahead. This game is, surprisingly, absolutely glitch-free. But, why the hell is the best game in Action 52 a puzzle game? Well, you beat the game, you get sent back to level 1, easy as that. Was this game fun? Well, no. Being the best game on the cartridge doesn't guarantee it's fun. And, like the rest of the games, you should avoid playing it. Although, if you were forced to play one of the games, choose this one. As boring as it is, it's at least beatable. Next up we have game number 20, entitled Space Dreams. Much like every other game in this collection with the word space in the title, it's yet another shooter. The twist here is that instead of a spaceship, you're apparently a pacifier shooting at various baby things such as teddy bears, diaper pins, and those Fisher-Price spinning carousel things that hang over a baby's crib. Yeah, for some reason, the people behind this decided to make this game specifically for toddlers. While the movement control is okay, the downside is that you can only shoot one bullet at a time, and the enemy placements are entirely random with more than enough room to maneuver. And I mean that, you can easily get by without shooting anything. That is, until you suddenly explode. 
That's right, after a certain amount of time passes, whether you've been shooting at stuff or not, your ship will suddenly explode even when nothing has hit you. Even if you were to mod it, or by some miracle that doesn't happen to you, there's only one stage, and it probably loops endlessly. So basically, this is yet another game in this lifeable collection that was left unfinished and unpolished. And even if it became a finished product, it's so boring, it'll put you to sleep faster than one of those lullaby CDs that you put on for your child at nap time. Or a Kenny G album, take your pick. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a good vertical shmup on the NES, take my advice, stick with Star Force, or anything that's not on this collection, you'll thank me later. If you want a general idea of the game streamers, just imagine Bionic Commando with bad controls and bad graphics, and, well, actually, just pretty much bad everything. You walk around trying to shoot your string, I guess? I think it's a string. Up to higher platforms in order to advance up. Okay. Well, here's a problem with this. Whenever you try to shoot your string, it seems as though that you need to get into an exact position in order to advance up. Which is very, very annoying. And scrolling up the screen, too, is gonna put a really bad hurt on your eyes. I mean, look at the graphics. They're not pleasing to look at at all. It looks like that a five-year-old just took a crayon and drew in the background. There are some obstacles in the way, including a rabbit in a magician's hat, a money bag, and some random guy walking around. Every time you go up a platform and run into one of these things, they turn into green sad faces. Why green sad faces? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, if I was in this game, I'd have a green sad face too. Because this game's so freaking bad. And another thing, the game is just so boring. I mean, all you'll find yourself doing is going up and up and up to no end. And it'll also drive you insane too with that stupid 10 second music loop in the background. <sighs> can't take this game anymore. Next. Spread fire is yet another shoot 'em up. You're a ship which looks kinda like a crawfish and you need to shoot all the bad guys. Shoot 'em ups aren't the most difficult genre in the world to design well, and that's probably why the shoot 'em ups aren't as broken as, say, the platformers. Not to say the game's any good though. The enemies are an actual threat, unlike some other games, and there is a consistent difficulty curve as you go along. Listing off some positives, the presentation isn't the absolute worst. I mean, yeah, the enemies look completely random and feature no rhyme or reason whatsoever to their designs. With that said, though, I do think the color combinations on them look quite nice. The background isn't half bad either. Any amount of praise, though, stops there. Though the first few levels aren't too bad for Action 52 standards, the game quickly becomes near impossible because of two reasons. First of all, like a lot of the games, the hitboxes for sprites get all messed up as they move around. Because of this, your bullets often go right through the enemies. The second reason is that enemies start to move way too fast for your useless bullets to shoot at. This is especially true for the blue lines enemies. You have three lives, and each of those lives lets you take an extra hit before dying. However, it doesn't really do much to change the game's level of unfairness. The only real chance you have is to spam your bullets. Like some other games in the collection, spamming your bullets will fill up the sprite limit, so if you spam while only one enemy is on screen, then no more will spawn. However, it only does so much. You may find yourself coming across minor glitches, however, aside from crappy hitboxes, it's mostly bug-free, surprisingly. Not to say it's polished, but it's not broken, at least. With that said, though, it might as well be. The game gets almost impossible not too many levels in, and there's a whopping 19 of them. That's right, 19 goddamn levels of this nigh-impossible tedium. Why does it get so many? It's one of the most ordinary games on the cart. <sighs> there are a lot worse games in Action 52, but there are certainly better ones. For sure, there are games with a bit more style and ambition. Which, speaking of which... Um, Bubblegum Rosie is definitely one of the more playable titles in Action 52, but it has the same unique touch that all of them do. Um, you play a girl, Bubblegum Rosie, and you're supposed to be looking for bubblegum, and for some reason you went to an alien planet to find it, even though, you know, Earth seems to have plenty of it. But you never actually collect any gum in the game, 
I, I, there's nothing to pick up at all. I mean, you shoot gum at your enemies, but you never run out. You never have to get any more. It has all the usual Action 52 nonsense, you know, glitching in and out of platforms, enemies disappearing when you touch them, or killing you from halfway across the screen, and spikes randomly deciding whether or not to kill you, but it does have three complete levels, so it has something on some of the other titles. The second one is so short, though, it, it switches to an odd overhead driving stage, and like a lot of the space shooters in the collection, you die right away if you don't move. I don't, the uh, developers seem to have a thing for that, but... Um, the graphics are okay for the collection. I mean, they're colorful enough, and Rosie kind of looks like they're cashing in on Polly Pocket or something, I don't know. But I mean, if you, if you finish the third level, if you finish the game, it doesn't even give you a game over screen, it just sends you right back to the first level. And I know a lot of the games did that in the collection, but not even giving a game over screen, I don't know. Yeah. So does she ever get her gum? I don't know. We don't know. And why did she go to an alien planet to get gum? I mean, well, it makes about as much sense as anything else, but, uh, yeah, that's Bubblegum Rosie for you. I'm Micro Mike. This is a side-scrolling shooter from hell. Your mission is to fly a pink phallus named Mike through a series of tunnels at light speed, which are swarming with deadly spaceships. Micro Mike is a very painful experience, often causing death in less than four seconds. The prognosis for this disease, I mean game, is very poor. Mike is expected to crash and die nigh instantaneously. You can move Mike only up and down. If Mike collides into a wall, he gets shunted towards the left side of the screen. Mike dies if he gets shunted too far. You will need to reserve all of your attention for dodging these walls at Mach 3. Even with infinite skill, there are some walls that will shunt Mike to the left no matter how hard you try to dodge them. While dodging, mash the A button to fire shots. You have no time or space for finesse, you can only hope to spam your shots so they hit the enemy spaceships by accident. If Mike crashes into three enemy spaceships or shots, he dies. Sometimes the random placement of enemy spaceships makes Mike's death guaranteed. Enemy shots are often invisible and home in on Mike's location. Although Mike can shoot down these enemy shots, the game decides whether or not Mike's shots will pass straight through them. Mike can only have one shot on the screen at a time. When you get to the end of the tunnel, you will face a boss. It is a pink ship that takes about 10 shots to destroy. Statistically, you're not going to be able to beat the boss. You are relying on sheer luck for the boss to not shoot through ceilings or floors. If you get lucky and beat the first boss, you will be rewarded onto stage 2. A same game with different colored puke green backgrounds. And after passing through stage 3, the game loops back to stage 1. Your fate in this game is solely dependent on garbage lottery mechanics. Micro Mike is only good for teaching life isn't fair. There are no winners in Action 52, only cheaters or losers. Either way you pick, good luck! Released in 1991, Underground is the 25th game on the Action 52. For comparison's sake, Ninja Gaiden 3 and Battletoads came out that same year. The game starts you off with a one or two player option, but since I don't want to subject anyone else to this, I will be going it alone. There is only one track for this entire game, but it just sounds like a muddy version of the Cheetah Men theme. You start by falling down a shaft and are met with the underground. Your goal is to make it past the enemies and find the unmarked exit. The enemy designs look like they were inspired by a Jinjo Ito story. I don't know what they are, but I can tell that they are suffering. Memorable sprites such as wandering diamonds and cartwheeling logs can seemingly spawn anywhere they want. All too often they cluster on top of a ladder that you need to progress. Killing them is also problematic as they can respawn anywhere and at any time. I found it useful to shoot often as enemies can reappear in front of you without warning. Most new players will learn to avoid the mushrooms. These shrooms are instant death and block the first ladder you see. We play as the purple skinned thing with blue pants. Controls consist of four directions of movement and a button to shoot. The levels themselves are easy to navigate and pose no challenge. One positive I noticed was that there are shortcuts you can take. This might be poor game design, but it also does let you get through the game that much faster. 
You only have three lives to complete the six screens and then are sent straight back into the first level. I wouldn't ever recommend this game and give it an F rating. Whoa, yeah, baby. Guess what I'm talking about here. Game number 26 here of Action 52, Rocket Jock. Or when you actually go to select in the main menu, it's called Rocket Jockey, but I don't know, whatever. Alright, so we're this cowboy on a giant missile, and we got a lasso, and we're shooting down different cows and stuff. <laughs> and it looks unique at first, but yeah, it's just another shooter here for the Action 52 cartridge, and man, is there a lot of them on here. Alright, we got three different enemy types here, cows, bulls, and evil black cowboys, because anything in black is inherently evil. Uh, so stupid. And we move up and down, and we can only fire one shot at a time on screen. It's a very slow shot too, so you gotta watch yourself. Thankfully, the controls in this game are rather good. If you just hang to the left side of the screen, you can avoid almost anything. And it just takes one shot to kill all three enemies in this game. The only real challenge in the game only comes from the black wearing cowboys that like to move up and down. Their shots are so slow that <laughs> they can even outrun their own bullets. The only real problem is when they come out towards you, they can move up and down and try to kill you kamikaze style. If you just stay out of the way, they're no problem at all. In fact, this game is no problem at all whatsoever. It's probably one of the easiest shoot mods I ever played in my life. You still get the same enemies in each stage, and it just repeats over and over. I was playing for 10 minutes straight, and nothing different happened. Yeah, so that's Rocket Jockey here for Action 52. What piece of crap? <laughs> Not surprising. I was hoping, you know, because you're this rocking cowboy and you have a lasso and all, that this is going to play like Stampede for Atari 2600. So, this is Star Soldier, thanks to Aquaman Reviews for letting me do this. <laughs> Man, that's a mouthful. Okay, over and out. Alright, we're officially halfway through Action 52. This is game number 27, Non-Human. And it's, um, well... Look, do I even have to say anything? Just look at this. It's not like Action 52 is known for its stunning graphics, but this is hideous even for this game's standards. Now, if you don't already have a migraine from the blinding green and purple background or the ear-splitting soundtrack, you're gonna get one from the gameplay. You play as some sort of... I don't know, I guess he's supposed to be a superhero with a cape or something? So you're battling these floating eyeballs and running pairs of dentures. There's a very crude platforming aspect where you have to jump on a series of blocks to get over a pit, but of course if you don't realize this you can't go back, so you have to kill yourself just to start over and do it right this time. And when you get past the pit you see a new enemy, some sort of snake that rears up and shoots projectiles from its tail. You can't duck, of course, so you have to back up and then wait for the damn thing to shoot at you before you can take it out. Then you have to wait for the projectile to get close enough for you to jump over it. This is probably the most challenging thing in the entire game just because the controls are seriously broken. You really almost have to double back just to get enough room to jump over. Eventually, you'll make it to what I'm guessing is a cave where you'll encounter the fourth type of enemy in the game. And I honestly don't even know what this guy is supposed to be. He's not hard, just shoot him and move on. The pits get a little wider at this point, so you'll have to get almost right up to the edge in order to make it. There's no point in even trying for momentum, just get as close as you can and then jump. If you make it this far, eventually the screen goes black without warning and you start over again at the beginning of the level. And that's non-human. Don't you feel lucky for getting to play that. Here we have Crybaby, a simple game with a disturbing premise. It takes place on a single screen, with multiple levels have bookcases between them. You can crawl left and right, and use the bookcases to pass up and down between floors. How you pass through ceilings and floors isn't explained, in keeping with the Action 52 theme. As you move around, you will likely ask yourself, how big is this baby meant to be? Compared to the size of your enemies, you would think it could simply crawl over them and crush them. Instead, you need to use a nondescript weapon to strike at those before they come into contact with you. Thankfully, its reach allows for you to strike from a relatively safe distance. There is little enemy variation here, with the main challenges being characters that will reduce your energy bar when they come into contact. Energy can also be lost by messing up your journey up and down bookcases. Already, there are plenty of questions worth asking. 
The lack of baby proofing, owner of the house, explanation of the reason why adults want to hurt a baby, never elaborated on. But the reason for choosing an infant to be the protagonist is the strangest aspect of all. I know plumbers were copyrighted and cheaters were already used, but the creators of this oddity must have some pretty tweaked moral compasses. The lack of variation extends to the level design. Platforms may change colour, different furniture types appear, including clocks and stoves, but once you plough through a handful of enemies and realise the rinse-repeat structure, you'll find there is little left in the tank to entertain, even with a take-turns co-op mode included. The colour palette is decent, but like many NES games, the depressing black background seems to overwhelm everything. Items strewn about the level look decent and can be distinguished individually, with the exception of a few that are recycled, albeit in different colours. Not even a well-done, sped-up version of the classic English poem The Star, commonly known as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, arguably the best music on the whole card, can push this game past forgettable territory. It becomes monotonous quick. Give it a go and see how long you can last before giving up and moving on. This is Super Fryman 93 and the game we're going to be playing today is Slashers. Slashers itself is a very bare bones beat em up. Much in the vein of Double Dragon, but fails in almost completely every way. Now you start off on this rooftop and you just walk forward, and then you stop by a dark skinned man who looks like he belongs to the Foot Clan. Now, you can either fight him, or you realize once you're locked in place, the game doesn't realize that you can walk backward, bait your enemy into a corner, and then just juking him, allowing your opponent to go off screen and just keep going forward. This is what would be called the dominant strategy throughout the rest of the game. You really don't have to fight anyone, which is this game's major flaw. If you had to fight everyone and every match was in your favor, you know, that's one thing. There's a degree of challenge to the game in which you do fight everyone, but you won't last that long because you only really have five hits to work with considering that your health bar in the lower left hand corner is huge, every hit you take takes at least two bars of health away. The other characters you'll run into are these big titted hooker women. Once you either dodge or miraculously beat everyone to a fight, you go into the subway level. And this is the only other level in the game that I found. I've gotten to like level 6 and really found nothing new with it. In this level you'll find a new enemy. A big burly biker dude that will take a substantial amount of health with every hit you take. And plus he's a bigger target so he's tougher to dodge. But it's still possible to dodge it, which is probably the best strategy that you can use against this guy. All in all, I mean, this game is probably the most completed game on Action 52. And that's sad. I mean, there's really nothing special about it. This is an Atari 2600 game at best. Not a game fit to be released in 1991. All in all, the game doesn't crash from what I can tell. It actually has two different styles of play, so I'll give it an the overall product is still an F. I mean, it's failed in its attempt to convey what it wants to be. It wants to be a good beat em up, and it's not, so that, it's an automatic F for that. But you do give admiration that the fucktards that made this game at least made a decent game. All in all, if you're going to play Action 52, give Slashers a try. You'll get bored with it pretty fast, like I did. Super Fryman 93, out. Hello everyone, Ash here, and tonight I'm reviewing Crazy Shuffle. Before I begin, I just want to give a big thank you to Aqualance Game Reviews for allowing me to do this review. Now the premise in Crazy Shuffle is quite simple. You're in a little area, you shoot some enemies, you go on stage 2. It's a rinse and repeat cycle. And it's inconsistent because you can kill one stage, it can be one enemy, you kill to go to the next stage, and then in that next stage you can be 10 enemies. It's very inconsistent in how many enemies it wants you to kill. Now there are six stages total. And while five or six stages are green, stage six is blue. The map will change a little bit, but to be honest, it's pretty much the same stage over and over again. Graphically, the game looks pretty bad. The colors look dull and boring and ugly. The enemies are sometimes hard to make out. Your bolts are... you can barely see them. Not to mention the controls are broken. The enemies, when they hit you, it has no effect. I mean, if they hit you and kill you, it's a rarity. The only thing that really can 
kill you in this game is the vortexes. That's about it. Musically, the game, it loops over and it can get irritating after a few minutes of play, so you might want to just turn off the music and put your own music in. Now, all you gotta do to beat this game is stand in a corner and start shooting, and you'll pass all six stages with ease. That's all you gotta do. Crazy Shuffle is a bad game, and I'm gonna give it a D minus. And this is Ash saying so long and good night, and a thank you to Aqualongs. Here we have Fuzz Power, and like most of the Action 52 games, it's wacky as hell. You play as a hairy guy with big feet, and your goal in this game is to hang on to your hair till you reach the end of the stage. On your way there, you'll be avoiding combs, brushes, and blow dryers, trying to blow every last bit of hair off of you. And when they do, you lose a life. Gameplay is fast, you move at a solid pace, and the graphics are decent. Aside from the severe flickering, that is. That said, the flickering is the hardest enemy in the game. It covers up the wind from the blow dryer, making it the deadliest combo. There are a lot of blow dryers near jumps in the first stage, making it almost impossible to pass. The rest of the game is much simpler. I found the best strategy is to roll along constantly. This will help you take out enemies on contact, like doing a spin dash in Sonic. Even if you play this game perfectly, you can only make it to the third stage, where there is a bunch of rocks you ascend, but the last set is higher than your ability to jump, effectively ending your game. This is believed to be done intentionally to get the Action 52 out on the market without actually having to complete the game. To sum it up, this is a bad game, one of the worst I've played, but not the absolute worst I've played, but it definitely is the shortest. Shooting Gallery is, in my opinion, one of the worst games in Action 52. You'd think Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, and Michael Moore all came together to program this miserable poop crust. The best part about this game, and I use the term best as loosely as possible, is that if you keep shooting rapidly, the game will crash. Well, either that or nothing will spawn on the screen until you stop firing. You know, I wish this game was real. You know, so I could kill the programmers? Now, I understand that this game was programmed by a bunch of college IBM programmers and that it's difficult to program on the NES, but really, this game makes you wonder how long it took them to make this crap. Oh, and speaking of crap, this game has to have some of the worst game design I've ever seen. What the heck kind of enemies are these? Bunny rabbits? Lizards? Ducks? Horses? Where am I? That's another one of the game's design flaws, not telling you where you are. Now the graphics aren't too bad, at least I was able to tell which animal was which. Except for that gray, green bird thing. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. The end game character doesn't look so bad either, but I think if the graphic artist, well, I don't know, took their time, I'm sure your guy would look much better. The music in this game is horrible, because there's no music. Really, out of all the bad things in Action 52, I thought the music was well done. All you get are the sounds of your gun firing and when you pause the game. That's it. You don't even get that satisfying sound for when you've hit something. Overall, despite how bad the other games are in this literal piece of crap, don't play this one. And if you do, may I advise that you take Prozac or some other antidepressant, because you're going to want to kill yourself after playing this game. Alright, here we have game number 33 on Action 52. This game is called Lollipops, or just Lollipop. I guess they couldn't figure out if they wanted to make it singular or plural. And you control this green guy who's holding what looks like a ping pong paddle or a balloon. I'm gonna assume it's a lollipop because that's what the name of the game is. And basically it's a platformer. You walk around or run around sinking these really weird enemies with, uh, with your lollipop. And that's about the extent of it. Uh, apparently whoever programmed this game has this weird balloon fetish because there's balloons all over the place. There's balloons on the floor, there's balloons hanging off the roof, the platforms are made of balloons. And even when you die, when all these weird fucking things touch you, you just turn into a whole bunch of balloons. What the fuck's going on here? Um, I really, really the most curious thing about this game is what kind of drugs were, were taken when they programmed this game, when they came up with the idea. Like, who was the guy that said, hey, let's make a platforming game with this guy and make it all balloon based and have him beat the fuck out of everybody with a candy thing. Uh, I don't know. This game is par for the course as far as Action 52 goes. I mean, it sucks just like the other ones. But I will give it an A for orig originality. At least it's not a space shooting game like the other 8,000 games on Action 52. This would be the only action platforming game that has uh, lollipop candy violence in it. So I'll give it an A for originality for that one. But aside from that, this game fucking blows and that's about it.
Evil Empire is a very basic platformer. You're a small blue guy climbing from level to level and killing enemies with an infinite number of bullets. A fires and B jumps. The objective is to kill enough enemies to advance, except that the game doesn't tell you how many are required. Green guys walk back and forth, purple guys walk back and forth and shoot at you, orange guys ride magic carpets and float back and forth, birds fly around in a triangular pattern, green floating guys move back and forth, and purple vases shoot fire from their tops as eyeballs drift out at you. One hit kills you, and you get infinite continues, but the hit detection and enemy placement make things difficult. Enemies will sometimes randomly appear in your path whether you're expecting them to or not. But if you have two or more enemies coming at you, you have to wait for one to finish dying before you can kill the next one. It doesn't take long, but it can be tricky if there are multiple enemies on screen. Also, if you shoot too high or too low, your bullets will sail over or under, or just go through enemies altogether. The controls for climbing ladders and ropes are nice and responsive. Most of the time you'll be killing enemies while standing on those that are adjacent to the platforms of enemies, but if you're having trouble, you can climb up to the edge of a platform and walk along the bottom of it to avoid getting tagged. From there you can jump up and fire, so long as there isn't an enemy in your way. Also keep in mind that jumping from certain heights can kill you as well. The platforms are large and the ladders and ropes are distinct, but the sprites are tiny. The background music isn't too bad, but it gets tiresome since it's the only piece of music in the game. There are only five levels to complete, and when you finish the last one, you start over from the beginning. There's a point system in place, as well as what I assume are rupees to collect, but both are useless. It's all about killing enemies and advancing. Needless to say, things get tedious fast. They shake things up in level 5 by making two of the ladders non-climbable, but that's it. It plays very much like an Atari 2600 game, and it's evocative of Mappy and Donkey Kong, so it's definitely playable, but you won't find yourself wanting to play through it more than once. Sombreros is one of those games where you just don't know what anything is. What are these? What is that? What are those? Are they good? Bad? I just... I just don't know. There's these spiral street cleaners? And flying blue boxes? Why is this game called Sombreros? Seriously, did the game designers think Sombreros in Spanish means running down the street throwing oranges at flying blue boxes that you can't see? I just... I... I just don't even get this game. It's like a fever dream induced by substances that are not of this world. The controls are just so stiff. It's stiffer than an Atari 2600 joystick. To even do well in this game, a turbo controller is mandatory. If you don't have one, you're just dead. That's it. Game over. No chance of survival. Then again, if you wanted a better chance of survival, maybe you would just stay on the sidewalk. In conclusion, this isn't the worst game of the Action 52 bunch. But that's not saying much. I'd stick with the barely functional shoot 'em ups, although I think I'd rather be playing anything else but this. Storm Over the Desert. Since Action 52 was released around the time of the Persian Gulf War, I guess this was Active Enterprise's way to shamelessly cash in on said war. It's a classic overhead type war game where you control a grey, slow moving tank. The D-pad moves you in four directions while the A button shoots in the direction you're facing and you can only have one shot on screen at a time. The stages either have you in a field, a desert, or a combination of both. The enemies in this game are comprised of stickmen, soldiers, pink tanks, and giant Saddam Husseins. It isn't hard at first to shoot the enemies, but they do get faster as the levels progress and they can generate in complete random spots on the screen. Most of the time they can appear either near the edge of the screen to go off it, or appear right next to you so they can run right into you. There are times when the pink tanks will change direction and start driving backwards and even sideways. The giant Saddams are impervious to your shots, but they do disappear when they either run off screen or collide with your tank. Like most games, if you get hit enough times, you lose a life. It rarely happens though, but sometimes you can stop paying attention how many times you've been hit, and one random teleporting enemy can appear right next to you, bump into you, and then you're down one less life. It gets worse by level 5 when the enemies are too fast, and you're constantly getting run into. The way enemies can turn on a dime to either avoid slash hit you, and the way you're handicapped to the crappy control, deaths in this game are incredibly cheap. 
Overall, this game is very repetitive and is an insult to both gamers and the Gulf War. Just avoid it like the rest. Mashman is another side-scroller on the Action 52 collection. You control a guy with some big-ass feet, and walking to the right is pretty much all you do until you realize that there are actually enemies in this game that you have to avoid. Yeah, it's kinda hard to notice when they flicker so fucking much. Can you stomp on them, Super Mario style? No, it just hurts you. Even though your feet are the size of some, some fucking, some big fucking feet. So for a game called Mashman, there isn't much mashing involved. Maybe it's supposed to be based off the TV show Mash. I don't know. Either way, it sucks. Well, you know what they say about guys with big feet. <laughs> they make some shitty fucking games. Game number 38 is my personal vote for the worst of the space shooters in this game. They came. That's what she said. You play as a purple spaceship, shooting down enemy spaceships while collecting power-ups that do... absolutely goddamn nothing. Except the one-ups. Obviously, they give you extra lives. Most people haven't seen too far from level 1, but be glad. Level 2 gives you very little room to fly around, while well, the hit detection of this one purple vine block thingy is kind of off for some reason. Action 52 standards, anybody? Level 3 gives you a bit more room to fly around and shouldn't be too much trouble. Level 4 is much like level 2, with slightly more room to fly around. The enemies are getting a little harder to hit now that they're considerably faster than before. Level 5 is when the game begins to get impossible. First of all, these gray ships are everywhere, they shoot like a sugar high kid with a laser pistol, and the space they expect you to stay in is very little. The dice borderlines give you barely any room to maneuver. Level 6 looks like a goth girl designed this. Pink and skulls? They don't intermix designers. Don't you know that? Then again, these are the same people that think the moon is pink, so I shouldn't be surprised. Level 7 has these blue and pink rings for some odd reason. Level 8 gives me an ice drain. Level 9 looks like DNA in space or something like that. Okay, remember when I said level 5 is when it starts to get impossible? Well, this level is impossible. The gray enemies don't die. I've tried so many times to kill them and they just don't die. Do I feel like cheating to beat them? Well, I've beaten every game that could possibly be beaten with Virtual NES, which basically skips Star Evil and Atmosquake, and that also means I beat Michael Mike. <sighs> but I've come to the conclusion that this is not only the hardest level in Action 52 hands down, this is the worst game on Action 52 hands down. And honestly, I have nothing else to talk about. I don't even know if it gives you a game over or you go back to level 1. So, let's just skip to whoever is doing Laser League. Laser League is one of the easiest games on the dysfunctional mishmash multi-cart that is Action 52. In fact, it's so easy, you can actually just fly at the bottom of the screen, hardly shooting at anything that moves. By that, I mean they are moving in a straight line, then in interesting patterns like an R-Type, Thunder Force, Gradius, or other shmups that were good and scored points. At the end of the two levels in this simplistic shooter is a boss. Some sort of deformed Pac-Man, to quote Mikey Spikey 200. To beat this deformed Pac-Man, you must attack near the top of the screen, that is where he likes to go, while the boss's bullets are still moving sluggishly on screen. If they disappear off screen, get out of its way immediately and continuously fire at the boss. Nothing changes. Not at all. It's the same monotony every two levels topped with a deep pitched droning hum of some sort. The manual says that there are power-ups. Well guess what? There are no power-ups during the countless wasted hours of replay value that is the equivalent of slave labor. Let's do some role-playing. It is 1991. You bought yourself a top-of-the-line, costly yet powerful Neo Geo Advanced Entertainment System, and you have $200 in your wallet, and you want to buy a new game for your Neo Geo. But you notice Action 52 on the shelf. You have two choices, yet they will impact you as a gamer in the future. A. 
buy a Neo Geo game that is worth the same cost as Action 52, but with more care and attention put into the game and the fact that it has more power than the 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System. B. Buy Action 52, throwing away your hard-earned money, making you mentally insane, wishing that you would have bought any Neo Geo game that brought arcade-quality care and affection into your home than just a half-hearted excuse of entertainment that should be buried along with E.T. for the Atari 2600. It's that bad. Number 40, Billy Bob. Billy Bob is actually an interesting game. This game is a platforming game where the goal is, obviously, to complete the different rooms until you get to the wooden door that leads you to the next level. This game starts you out in a room where you're in a prison iron bar room thing. But for some reason the entire place is falling apart as part of the ceiling is falling as well as arrows from nowhere coming down on you. The animation is very good for being an Action 52 game. From the movement to the jump and the pull up, they look a lot like Prince of Persia animation. In other words, they look great. But the thing that ruins the game is the freaking controls. To jump, you have to run and press the jump button, because you can't jump while you're standing still. To do a pull up, you press the up button on the d-pad, which isn't bad or horrible, I'm just saying. When you advance to a different screen, you wouldn't even get the time to react when you have to jump over a hole. So most of the time, you wouldn't even get past the first screen without dying. Oh, and you die by touching the air. That makes a whole lot of sense, right? Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. You have a gun in this game. But you never really actually get to use it because there are no enemies and you never really run out of ammo. So it's completely stupid and worthless to even have it. The strangest thing about this game is when you beat level 2. When you beat level 2, level 3 starts up in one of the levels from the Cheetah Men game. Why? I don't know. Don't ask me, I just review games. Action 52, number 41, City of Doom. This has got to be one of the most misleading titles for any game I've ever seen and honestly that's the only reason why you would ever want to play this game. Now you'll notice on the start of screen that there's an option for two players, but let's be honest, even one player alone should be considered a joke. Now the big story for this game is that you climb a huge ass building while avoiding windows, bear traps, hornets, and bowling balls. And what you use to fight off these enemies with, it's a fucking tomato. Now the tomato is absolutely horrible because you can only throw off one at a time and you can only shoot in four directions. Now this can actually be a problem because if you try to shoot to the left, you have to move to the left and by default it will shoot upwards and let's be honest that's the only way you want to shoot in the beginning. The title really lives up to this name as being a doom city because really, it's a doom that you're climbing this building to begin with in this hillhole of a city. Now one thing I gotta mention are the windows, they are very inconsistent. At one time you can move over one, nothing happens. At another time, if just one pixel of your body touches it, it kills you. And as for the bowling balls, they will sometimes move right in your face. You have no chance to react to it and thus you take a very cheap hit. Now because I don't have so much time, I have to wrap this up. I'm really surprised at how this game defies any lore of physics I've ever seen. When you shoot the tomato, it will constantly move in that direction, it never changes direction, and therefore if you shoot one upwards, it will just continuously to move upwards. You'll find that if you keep landing this building, you will constantly move upwards and never reach space, which is probably a good thing, because there are so many space themed games in Action 52 that is actually refreshing. But still, by the end of the day, you have no business to play this game, it's absolutely horrible. Peace out. Next up, we have Bits and Pieces. According to the manual, the goal is to make solid lines out of various sizes and shapes as they float down to the bottom of the screen. As you can see here, that's not the case. Instead, you play a graveyard janitor trying to get to his car at the end of his shift. He looks like Gru mixed with Uncle Fester. They surprisingly managed to pull off the horror theme pretty well. I could tell I'm in a graveyard. You get four enemies. They all look like they'd be in a graveyard level. Unfortunately, the guy making the game didn't know how to flip sprites, so the skeletons and alien grapes always come from the back, while the werewolves and mutant broccoli always come from the front. The music is really good, it's this upbeat horror loop. Has a real Dracula Phantom of the Opera type quality to it. 
My only complaint is that it loops too quickly, but I wouldn't worry about that. You're more likely to get bored of the game before you get bored of the music. The jumping isn't as bad as some of the other games, however the buttons are still reversed. The enemy spawn is random, so you just have to be alert at all times. Be careful as you get less time to react than you think. The enemies don't naturally scroll onto the level, it's more like they suddenly glitch in on each side. Just focus on walking right until an enemy appears on screen. It's best to then stop and deal with the problem at hand. You can jump onto the enemy or simply jump over them. You do this for around 5 minutes and you win the game. Overall this might be the best Action 52 game, but I don't have to tell you that's not saying much. Compared to other games on the cart, I give it a C- for being playable. It has obstacles and at least the illusion of real level completion. Even if the game does just loop back to 1 after you beat 3. If I'm grading based on quality of a $4 game in 1991, it gets a D. But if I'm grading based on what you have to purchase in order to play the game, it gets an F. Alright guys, this time on Action 52 we're up to number 43, Beeps and Blips. In this game you play as a roving pink diamond with guns. And you fight little crosshairs in level 1, the little green, and they, they move around and they're very slow and some move fast. Now one cool thing about this uh, particular game, you don't ram into the walls and die instantly and it's not a one hit kill level. Uh, all these things do take life from you. and much like LJN games where random things that make no sense refill your health, uh, in this game, one-ups refill your health. Yeah, one-ups. They don't give you lives, they refill your health. I don't know why. Um, it really makes no sense to me, but uh, that's how you play the game. Uh, you're in this one room, like in an arena, basically, and you fight enemies until you either die or beat it. And the first couple levels, they really go by pretty quick. Uh, literally level 1 and level 2 can go by really within 10 seconds if you do them correctly and don't die and I've seemed to notice the best way to notice if you're running out of health is your diamond starts losing its little turrets around the side of it and the less of them you have the closer you are to dying and another positive about this Action 52 game is the control is slightly good and by slightly I mean it's playable you can move in eight directions, although when you fire the gun, it really goes in the last direction you were going. It's not all that great. And I will say that of the first four levels, they aren't too hard, but when you get to level five, just be prepared to die. You're not going to win. Much like with the rest of all the Action 52 games, you are not going to be happy. You will just be disappointed. And I'm sure, just like with any other game, because I sat there and tried to beat it a few times, but those green balls were just chasing me down so much. It just wasn't fun. And I am not going to sit and suffer through an Action 52 game that makes me want to scream and suffer. So let's hope and pray to God that number 44 might actually have some type of playability. But I guarantee you it will not. In Manchester, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up platformer consisting of three levels where once again the jumping mechanics are broken. And speaking of jumping, every time you jump, the music pauses and this strange sound effect plays. I have no idea where they're going with this. So the main challenge comes from what I assume are these fireballs, which you can actually punch out of midair. But between memorizing their patterns, timing your punches, and trying to play with crappy jumping, yeah, there will be plenty of cheap shots to go around. Now once you do get to the enemies, who are these gray guys, the only way they can kill you is if you happen to run into them. Some of them don't even move, like this first guy. What an idiot. There's also these fire traps that'll kill you upon contact, and there's a few of these where jumping over them is pretty much impossible. But the weirdest thing about Manchester is that if you fall into a pit, not only do you survive, but you can also bypass the enemies and fire traps by walking through the floor. Seriously, has glitch skipping ever been this easy to get to? Anyway, other than that and the occasional boss fights, which are pretty basic at that, there is not really much else to speak of here in this broken beat-em-up. The good part of boss is that you get to play as a lizard dude blasting his enemies in dust. That's it. That's all the good there is to ring from this bowl of oatmeal. Boss might be the most boring game of the entire collection. There are a lot of games that are simple in Action 52, but this is beyond simple. It's got the same backwards controls as the other games. B is jump, A is shoot, but unlike others you can pretty much just ignore the jump button. There are no pits and no real hazards to jump over, and your jump is too slow to avoid the one thing that it might be asked to avoid anyway. Our player character hails from the Simon Belmont School of Mobility. His top speed is a casual saunter. 
He can fire only one bullet at a time, but this is all you'll ever really need, as actual enemies are incredibly sparse. There are only three enemies. A Mafia Turtle that will sometimes shoot at you, which is the one time jumping might help, but don't count on it. A Naga looking guy that ambushes and rushes you, but if you just constantly fire is zero threat. And the boss of each stage, a fedora wearing frog who falls to the enormously complex strategy of sitting on the left side of the screen. It never fires and never crosses the midpoint, so the only time it could ever pose a threat is when it suddenly drops in. Which it might not do if there's too much on the screen, by the way. The game's only real threat are the falling bombs, sometimes. On odd number of levels, these are probably what's most likely to kill you. If there's one right above your head, you have to time moving past it in a pretty narrow window. But if it's higher up, just keeping moving will thwart it. On even number levels, these droppers are all so high that they're basically irrelevant so long as you hold right and never let go. Sorry, but hold right and press A in rhythm isn't a game, it's a task. Boss has six levels before it starts over at level one. In practice, it's really two levels repeated three times with no differences besides maybe the bombs moving a little faster in later levels. In reality, if you've played for about 20 seconds, you've pretty much gotten all of the boss that it has to offer. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Erickson, and I'm a little too obsessed with Action 52. I wrote the article, Action 52 My Quest is Over, and in this article I interviewed one of the developers of the game, Mario. The main reason why I mention this, other than the quick shameless plug, is to lead me into game number 46, Dead Ant. Not Deedent, Dead Ant. Which is basically the game's shooting gallery, but in this game you can actually die. Dead Ant has you control this pink ant who must defend himself against all sorts of different color ants. In typical Action 52 fashion, you have your projectile weapon thing that takes care of these unwanted foes. And when enough ants are destroyed, the stage ends once again in a typical Action 52 fashion by just cutting to level 2. Dead Ant's main problem that most people seem to acknowledge in their reviews is when an ant gets down to your level, he doesn't move back up. So you're basically screwed unless you're some kind of action game master. This is tedious, but once you try to avoid it, the game gets so easy to the point where it gets boring. While I was interviewing Mario, I was fortunate enough to actually get some concept art for Dead Ant, as well as a little backstory of what it was supposed to be. Here's an excerpt from my interview with him, as read by me. My original design was to have one large map that would scroll up, down, left, and right. You were supposed to collect food to take to the queen while avoiding enemy insects. Mario was just a beginner when it came to game design, and the rest of the developers of the game were also. So while the ideas and dedication was there, the very immediate deadline Vince Perry provided with the little preparation time on how to actually learn to make games made good sounding ideas of the original Dead Ant turn into the Dead Ant we know today. Some games in Action 52 can actually be kind of fun if, well, you're insane like me. But then there's a large amount of games like Dead Ant that really don't hold up well and just kind of seem like filler. It's definitely not the worst game in the compilation, but it's definitely nowhere near the best. Anyways, I'd just like to say thanks to Aqualung's Game Reviews for providing the opportunity for me to come on and talk about Action 52. Uh, any excuse I can talk about Action 52, I'll definitely take it. So once again, thanks Aqualung, and thanks to you for watching. With a name like Hambo's Adventures, you can't really expect that much. But even just by reading the name, it fills you with disappointment and dread. The odds of a game with a title like that have a worse chance of being good than an Ua Ball movie. The game is about Hambo an abomination of nature that is made of half pig and half man. The game is made up of a completely monochromatic palette, like it was made for a Game Boy Color game, a really, really early one. The music is an awful medley made from six beats a designer made when his cat got on the keyboard. Besides just being a terrible game, it's also a terrible knockoff of another game, Donkey Kong. The game is also insanely hard. You get one life, one hit, and you're dead. Go back to the beginning. The problem is that the original circle on the first line, I have no idea what it's supposed to be, has a terrible tendency to spawn directly in front of you or directly behind you, killing you instantly. At number 47, even, even the designers must have been ashamed to have this grotesque, awful pile of pixelated pig shit in their game because they had to hide it on the very last page. Stay away from this game, and especially Action 52, at all costs.
All right, time warp tickers for the NES from Action 52. What can you say about one of the strangest games to ever have come out for the NES, and for an unlicensed game for that matter? Well, what, what other game can you say has you playing as a pair of fingers going through a chessboard world with, gra with grass, hands on sticks, and light switches in the background? with your main method of attack is flicking your fingers, haha, at pens, weird floating balls, and what looks like brown worms on the ground. I think it's one of those games where your mind is just so boggled by the strangeness and the cheapness that you struggle to find stuff to say about it, but then you find out you can say things about it, but your mind is just so fried from how weird it is that you just can't describe it in, well, any words. Or maybe some words if your mind actually manages to put itself together in time to talk about it. Anyways, when you flick enemies, they display the word time, and when you die, your, your fingers explode and the word time pops up with a question mark. Both happen when you die or flick enemies. But... I can't really say much more of it because I just don't know what to say about this mind screw of a game. Game number 49 is Jigsaw. You play as an 8-bit Bob the Builder with a nail gun and you go around the workshop shooting at hammers, wrenches, screwdrivers, and what I assume is a caulk gun. There are also skill saws, but not as many of them as there are the other pieces of equipment. The only other hazards in the game are pits which you can barely see because they don't look like pits. They look like lower platforms that have an apex at the bottom of them. You die in one hit and these enemies are fast as shit, so you better have a very itchy trigger finger. Not only are they fast, but some enemies like to go through one or two blocks of platforms. If you're on the same level or on the level above your enemies, you could be in harm's way, though they never pass over a ledge so you could stand under them and then jump up and shoot. The most difficult thing is going downhill when enemies are in your way. You can't shoot down and the controls are way too shitty to pull off any stunts. But it's okay because if you baby step forward you can play with the edge of the screen and make them hit the magic line between on screen and off and glitch them into oblivion. Keep in mind that you can't back up so if you're going to glitch your way through you need to leave yourself plenty of room. Make your way to level 2 and you had better be like a cat ready to pounce because there's quite a bit of open area making the glitch trick impossible here. Beware the cult guns in this level, they do not fuck around. If there's a wall separating you, they'll go through it. If there's a pit, they'll fly over it and this level is jam packed with them. So I say fuck it. I don't have the patience to get any further in this game. This is painful to play and I can think of several other Jigsaw games that would be much more pleasant than this. Ninja Assault. You know you're off to a great start when the game's title is misspelled in the menu screen. Ninja Assault is a beat-em-up game with some pretty pathetic graphics, but it's also one of those more amusing games on the Action 52. There's been many great ninja games, but this is the only one I know of where you hump your enemies to death. I'm not kidding. This guy has two swords like fucking Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and still he would instead hump his enemies to death. I didn't realize that when they said Ninja Assault, they meant Sexual Assault. Seriously, this is the only NES game I know where you can hump an eagle to death in mid-air in a gory explosion of ninja manhood. The game has no levels, and it's just the same four enemies over and over again. A ninja, another ninja, the bird, and a dog which you never see coming. The lower part of the screen looks like they were trying to do a mirror effect, but failed massively. But for a game which has no end, it at least has a two-player mode for all you gang rape bestiality necrophiliacs. Just kidding, it's not co-op. And one thing I do hate is that if you die at the hands of a ninja, then they'll take revenge on you by humping your dead corpse. Sick. Robbie and the Rise of Robots. Well, I start up the game and the first thing I notice is that you look like some kind of guy wearing a dress. Don't think I want to know what's up with that one. Anyway, all you do is run forward and shoot. That's it. If you do that, the enemies in the game won't even get a chance to touch you. Laser cubes at the top are going to try and shoot at you, but they're always going to miss. Also, to me, they look like some kind of alien Eat at Joe's sign. Just saying. Anyway, first level looks like some kind of ice cave stuck in the 1980s. 
odd. Uh, the robots are generic as hell and look like they're facing backwards as they roll at you. Level 1 ends abruptly and you're taken away to level 2, which looks like some hell version of level 1. Level 2 has pits you can fall into and multiple fields to stand on, including one at the bottom of the screen for some reason. Of course, you want to jump over the pits, but that's not exactly easy considering the jumping controls are just as bad as every other Action 52 platformer. If you do make your way past the jumps, you will encounter hover robots just above your field of fire and generally get killed in seconds. This was as far as I cared to get with this game because it's just plain terrible. This has been Chris, and thanks for listening. Peace. This is it. The ultimate game on this stupid ass cart. The Cheetah Man. Unlike the other 52 games, this one had a lot more planning for it for the future, including a sequel, action figures, and a Saturday morning cartoon with Disney animated style quality. As you can expect with how this game was received, none of that came into fruition. Anyway, in this game you you play as the Cheetah Men named Ares, Hercules, and Apollo as they help out the action game master who has been dragged into the TV. In the first two stages you play as Ares, who has clubs as his main attacking move, which, as expected from this stupid ass card, is A instead of the usual B like most other games do. And it quickly becomes clear that the enemies that you face in this game are actually the enemies from the previous 51 games. And all of them are pretty much so fucking easy. Even the boss at the end of the second level is easy. And if you didn't turn off the game out of pure boredom, you will play the next two stages as Hercules. Although if you asked me what they should be named, then I would have said he should have been named Achilles because he is such a big pussy. I mean, look at what happens to him if he gets hit by a frickin' toy car. And the levels are much harder than... Ares' levels, and if you somehow manage to get past them, you play as Apollo, the arrow shooter, and I don't want to talk about this game anymore. It's frustrating me. You should only buy the game if you want to listen to this game's soundtrack, which is killer by the way, but it's for free on YouTube, so why bother? Okay. Wow. So, first off... I want to simultaneously thank and apologize to all 52 volunteers for contributing to this collaboration. Just like anyone who spent the outrageous $200 that it cost to buy this thing that will never get their money back. $200 in 1991. That's $200 30 years ago. That's more than a paycheck for a lot of people. Just pissed away. And Action Enterprises had the audacity to start developing a sequel to Cheetah Man. Alright, maybe they started working on this immediately after finishing work on Action 52, and the failure of the release hadn't even happened yet, which would explain why the game was never finished. This said prototype has gone on to a level of infamy on its own. There was another version of Action 52 released for the Sega Genesis in 1993, which included more experienced developers, more time to finish the damn thing, and actual playtesting. Go figure. It also wasn't a port of the NES version. They broke it all down and built it up from scratch, with many of the games from the NES not even being included this time. So it was an improvement, but it still sucked. And the damage had been done anyway. I mean, why the hell would anyone trust a game under this name ever again? Thankfully, nobody did, and the Action 52 series would die from there. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in this project. I know it was a long time coming, like over a fucking decade, but sometimes you can't rush things. I mean, just look at how Action 52 turned out. And that will wrap up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.